Lately, I've been very interested in solar and battery technology. It started as free charging for my BMW i3, but now I want to power as many things with solar as possible. To effectively use solar, I need batteries. So today I'm checking out this Golden Mate Orion 1012 volt 100 amp hour smart lithium battery. I will be running a capacity test and cracking it open later in the video, but let's start with a quick overview. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery with a built-in LCD display and an app for monitoring the status. And it weighs only about 30 pounds. That's less than half of regular batteries. Anyway, inside the box we have a couple of cables that can be used to put this battery in a bigger configuration. In fact, you can connect up to 16 of these in 4P4S configuration for over 20 kilowatt hours of energy. We also get a couple of wire locks to make our own cables. The manual shows us some specs, which are important for operation. The wiring configuration for parallel or series connections, the LCD features, and how the communication cables are configured. You can also scan the QR code here to download the app. More on that shortly. Which finally brings us to the actual battery. It has two handles, so it's easy to move around and large rubber feet on the bottom to stop it from sliding. Behind the two rubber grommets, we find the communication ports which are to be used to connect multiple batteries together. This battery feels super solid in the hands, but we'll talk about quality once we open up the lid. The battery came with about 83% charge, so I decided to hook it up to one of the spare solar panels I had laying around and left it for the rest of the day. With one of these panels, it would take most of the day to charge the battery from 0 to 100, but in this case, it was done in a couple of hours. Of course, this is basically trickle charging and you can easily hook up more solar panels or a 20 amp charger and get it done faster. With the battery fully charged, it's time to run a capacity test to see if it actually has 1280 watt hours, which is equivalent to 100 amps at 12.8 volts. All right, so here's a quick setup I've just put together to test this battery. We are starting at about, it was well, it was 98% when I started, so it's been going for a little bit. And as you can see, it's pulling about 925 watts. Um, this reports 930, so that's pretty close. And the inverter says 870 watts, so basically, you know, it's losing about 60 watts in the processing of the power, but this and the battery agree, so we know that that's probably the accurate number. So that also means that we are pulling about 75 amps from this battery. That's about three quarters C, so 0.75 C. I was trying to go for 100 amps, but I think this will be a good indicator anyway. So what we're trying to do is prove that this battery has 1,280 watt hours in it, or 100 amps at 12.8 volts so if that's the case then we should see those numbers on this little indicator and how am i measuring that well i bought this little device that comes with a shunt that goes on the negative side so between the battery and the load which is going to be this crappy little inverter but it should prove the point either way so whether the battery has the energy in, stored in it or not we will know in about uh, maybe an hour and some time but basically I've set it up the way it says in the manual. And if you're wondering what I'm using for my load, it's this resistive heater. Uh, it's on speed one and the temperature's turned all the way up. Let's quickly talk about the app while the test is running. It's actually very simple. Each time you open it, you see a list of Bluetooth devices in your area, which I don't really like, but in the list, you then click on the battery, which automatically connects you to the BMS. I wish I could save this as my default or at least add the battery to favorites. Then you are presented with the status of the battery and some specs. In addition to voltage, current and power, we can see if the battery is being charged or discharged and the time it has been running or the time to get it to 100%. Below we have six different temperature measurements and any alerts that could be present. You cannot change any settings from this app as far as I can tell. All right, time has passed and we are definitely getting closer to the end. We have so far pulled 1,120 watt hours out of it. So we only have a little bit left. So far it's doing pretty well. The little setup I've made here actually seems to be working pretty well. So I'm happy with that. These wires did get pretty warm. How warm? Let's see, about 105 or so Fahrenheit. 
So a little bit warmer, but nothing too crazy. This is a six uh, gauge wire. We're pulling 75 amps. So yeah, it's pretty up there. Of course the shunt gets really warm. So don't touch that. It's about 150, 160 degrees. So that's very hot. It would not be touching that with my hand. The battery's at about 98 degrees. So that's pretty good. Not getting too hot. And as you can see, we are still pulling 930 Watts and we only have 6% capacity left. Will it make it to the promised number? Let's see. And of course I did start at 98%, not at a full 100% charge, as I was testing to make sure the setup's actually working before I started recording. Well, it looks like we're officially gonna hit the capacity of this battery. Just a few seconds, there it is. So the inverter is starting to beep, which is telling me that the voltage is probably too low for the inverter. It just dipped under 11 volts. The battery has not shot off yet. The battery is still providing power and it's still got, well, it says 1% charge. So I do wonder what the low voltage cutoff is. I know the absolute zero on lithium batteries is about 10 volts or two and a half volts per cell. So that would mean that we still have some, some time to go. I'm just gonna let it go until it shuts off either the inverter or the battery. This heater is still working and blowing hot air. So no issues there. And there it goes. It is finally off. So the battery finally turned off. As you can see we're at zero, zero and it cut the power off completely because this device is powered by the battery itself and as we can see it turned off luckily caught it on camera so we'll see exactly the amount of power we got out of this battery lastly let's take this battery apart and see the build quality inside it has proven its capacity and i really like the design but of course we want to see how it actually is on the inside luckily it seems like this battery actually has screws and it's not like melted plastic so it should be pretty easy to get into it. And they're using the standard Phillips screws, so you don't need any special tools to open it up, which is really nice to see. All right, let's see. All right, look at that. Smells very chemically, but you know. Looks like the terminals right here are covered in some kind of silicone. I wanted to bring to your attention is that there is a gasket in this cover so this is water resistant all right looks like we got all the screws out let's see if we can pull this out i'm pretty sure it's glued to the bottom well this is constructed in a way that i'm not going to be able to take it apart without destroying it and i don't want to destroy it because well i actually want to use this battery honestly i don't want to take it apart any further i just wanted to see the general construction of it and so far i'm pretty impressed it does look like we have cylindrical cells so that's something different. Usually they're like the square ones, right? The rectangle ones. We have a pretty beefy BMS here and it is a branded Golden Mate TI-04 or 001A05. So it's nice to see that they're using their own uh, BMS and not, uh, you know, like a Dali BMS or something like that. The wires are pretty beefy here, although it is kind of surprising to see that they're using two eight gauge wires combined together. I believe the MOSFETs are all going to be under here. They have a nice solid plate of what looks like aluminum to, dissip to dissipate the heat. Looks a little messy right there, but other than that, looks pretty nice. We can see the Bluetooth module just right there and the four temperature sensors. So there's one, two, three, and four. So there's a total of four sensors here. That's great to see. This, of course, is not a heated battery or anything like that, but I do like the construction. It seems to be very solidly built. And yes, the battery is glued in, so that's why I can't take it out unless I basically destroy this plastic uh, casing, and I definitely don't want to do that. And there you have it, guys. I am very impressed with this battery, especially the value with all of the smart features as well as the design. I know I didn't dive into the specs and all of the safety features, but you can check that out for yourself on their website, which I've linked down below. From what I've learned so far, it should be great for marine use, like trolling motors, as it is IP67 rated, RVs, 
home storage and of course solar. I will be testing and even building some more batteries in the near future, so stay tuned. Check out the portable solar card that's capable of charging my car that I built a few months ago if that's something you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!